Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Sunday over here in the Atlantic. A little bit of activity going on over here in the Caribbean area. We've got some showers and thunderstorms. We have a tropical wave that's in the central Caribbean right now moving northwestward. And the northern tip of this tropical wave broke off and formed a surface trough over here north of Hispaniola, which has been exhibiting a little bit of low-level vorticity periodically, but it's nothing to be really concerned about here. We have a strung out front, and there's an upper trough right in here uh, elongated along the eastern side seaboard and the eastern Gulf of Mexico, which I noted last week, would be ventilating the Caribbean to its southeast here, which indeed it is doing. However, this pattern is a little bit odd because although there is increased energy in this area of the world right here. It's a little bit too broad. It's so broad, in fact, that the convergence associated with this area is very lackluster, is how I would describe it. The winds in here are very light everywhere in this region. The trade winds stop right about here and start converging near the surface trough, and everything in here is very light, which means that there's no real focusing of the heat in this area of the world. Although we have it, there's not anything to really consolidate it, and thus it's going to be hard to get anything going, which is probably why the models are not too excited about any of these features as this tropical wave moves up towards the Gulf of Mexico and this feature moves up towards the southeast US coastline as well. So we're probably not going to see a whole lot out of these features, although they should be watched, especially this one to the south in the, tro in the Caribbean with this tropical wave. They should be watched, but probably not a significant threat for development at this point. Now, if we look at the upward motion currently, we can see that in our area of the world, we are hogging all of the upward motion, all of these green lines here over the eastern Pacific and the Caribbean and southwest Atlantic. And according to the MJO forecast, we're going to be staying in this general area, octant one, for the next 10 to 15 days continuing to have that upward motion for quite some time, indicating that we may have more opportunities for potential development and we may have to watch for some mischief before the first half of July is over and we will have more on that as soon as hints start to come in if there are any. I wanted to mention something else today since it's a little bit quieter in the tropics regarding the climatic indicators for what the season overall is going to be like. I've talked a lot about analog years and I've talked about similarities with more active seasons that hit the United States. I'm going to show you one more thing today. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly chart for North America in all of the hurricane seasons that had three or more hurricanes make landfall on the United States coastline during the season. There are 15 of those years since 1948. And notice here we have this trough over the northwest. We have a ridge extending from New England all the way down into Texas. And then we have lots of blocking over Greenland and the troughiness over the western Atlantic during the month of June. I forgot to mention that. This is the month of June for those years. Now let's go to this June, which we just wrapped up, and look at the 500 millibar height anomalies. Notice the very strong similarities. We have the trough over the northwest, that strung out ridge from New England to Texas. Texas, and then the troughiness beneath the blocking over Greenland. Very similar. It would be very hard to find an analog better than this for uh, the June. And this is indicating to us that the pattern this year is continuing to follow what some of the analogs have set up, and concerningly, the same years that had landfalls in the United States. Now, if we take this month, June, and we extend this forward these years into the peak of the season, August through October, here's what we get. That ridge from Texas lifts north, and we get it over uh, the southern south of Hudson Bay over here. Lower heights develop near the southeast United States coastline in Florida, which allows storms to come up and make landfall beneath the block, which helps direct storms westward and bring them into the coast, which is why these years had so many landfalls on the coastline. So what this is saying to us is since the pattern is so similar, if this continues to follow the analog pattern, we may see this ridge start to lift northward during July and August and move up here, which right now it's blocking stuff to the south. Remember, Arlene came into Mexico over here because this ridge is sitting here really strong, protecting the United States coastline for now early on in the season. But according to the analogs, uh, the years that have many landfalls see this ridge lifting north and allowing the activity to be brought into the west right into the United States. So we'll have to be watching this closely to see if this pattern continues to follow the historically active landfall years for the U.S. And that's really concerning for this year. I hope folks are ready for it. This is probably going to be a high impact year, despite a lower total number of storms than last year. That's been the motto for the forecast this season. Hopefully everybody is prepared by now. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope all of you fellow Americans have a wonderful Independence Day.